Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Molly, I'm a mum here in the UK of two children. My husband and I have a little girl who we had biologically a few years ago and more recently we went through the UK adoption process to welcome home our gorgeous little boy. Today's video I want to take you through the UK adoption process, what it involves, how the different stages work and what me and my husband had to do in each stage. We started the adoption process late 2019, so fairly recently, and my husband and I did adopt through a voluntary agency instead of our local authority. Every single local authority and voluntary agency can work slightly different, but the process that I'm gonna take you through should generally give you a gist of what to expect, whether you decide to go with a local authority or adopt through a voluntary agency instead. Overall, the UK adoption process normally takes around six months. Sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter. For myself and my husband, we managed to go start to finish in about five months, and that's because all of our checks came back on time and our social worker was super, super speedy. After we went to an information evening or you've been to an information event and you've decided where you want to adopt through, whether it's with your local authority or if you found a voluntary agency that you want to adopt through instead, you will normally be invited to start stage one of the adoption process. Before this, our agency did some things a little bit differently and they had what they called a pre-registration interview. This is where our social worker at the time came to our house for a full day and we had a really good chat. It was a bit like an interview, but very informal around lots of different areas such as our childhood, marriage, education, children, families, etc and she put all of this information into a report. This report then went to her manager to read through. She read through it and said, yes, this couple sound fantastic and very suitable to adopt. Let's invite them to start stage one with our agency and we'll take it from there. So me and my husband had the pre-registration interview. Again, this is not standard across um, all local authorities and voluntary agencies, but it may happen, it may not happen. You might just go straight on to stage one, but we found it was a really good opportunity to have a chat with a social worker, have any of the questions that we wanted answering, and they had a really good understanding of who we were and why we wanted to adopt. Stage one of the adoption process usually lasts around two months. And this is what I would describe very much as the admin phase of the process. It's a lot of form filling. The beginning of this for us was a stage one planning meeting. We sat at the agency with our social worker and she took us to a written document of how stage one would work. We put dates next to everything that we wanted everything done by and she gave us a heap, a heap of forms to fill out. The forms were very basic. It was mainly we had to put down address history, employment history, where we'd been to school. We had to put down all of our wider family's details, right up to cousins, aunties and uncles, their birthdays, their dates of death, if relevant. We also had to give details of our children, previous relationships, and we also had to fill out a financial form detailing our income and outgoings and how we expect those to change with an additional child in the future. At this point, our agency sent checks to our local authority for both of us. We also had DBS checks just to ensure that we were suitable to adopt as well. We also had to provide three written referees. So we had one family member and two very close mutual friends who were able to provide a written reference answering questions that our agency asked them. And later on, our social worker went in person to interview these referees for about an hour each individually. Because me and my husband also have a dog, we had to get a vet reference from our vets just saying that we keep up to date with vaccinations and we take her if she's sick we take her regularly for checkups and her boosters and we also had a pet observation in this stage so our social worker came to our home basically just watched the dog around the house asked basic questions about their temperament and um, where we got them from how they are around our existing daughter if you don't have children how they are around other children if you can envision any challenges they basically just wanted to see that our dog wasn't vicious we also had to submit family trees and eco maps. So these are things that we designed ourselves. They had to be electronic, but I know again, every criteria is different depending on where you adopt. So we did a virtual family tree, right up to grandparents, right down to cousins. And we also had to do an eco map, which is a support map. So me and my husband were in the middle of what you could call a spider diagram and branching off were all areas of support. And this went from family to employer, to Adoption UK, to football clubs and neighbours, etc., just so that these could be submitted to the social worker and along with our report that would eventually go to panel so they could see what kind of support network we have locally and wider. We also had to fill out a chronology of life events each and this was quite complex. So we had to, in a Word document, detail every single significant event 
of our lives from birth to now and this included education changes, moving home, starting new relationships, losing pets, losing family members that we loved, having children, um, any problems with fertility, the pregnancy of our daughter, etc. It was a lot to think about. We also started some training in stage one. Now our preparation training wasn't until much later. In stage one we did book our dates for preparation training with the agency but our agency offered KCA training which if some of you have read Kate Cairns work you'll know who she is. She's a very good practitioner in the world of adoption and childhood trauma and child development so we had to submit some online module work individually to our agency to show that we had studied this in stage one. At this point we also signed up our family and friends to family and friends training. Our agency offered this, it was fantastic. I think uh, my dad and stepmom, my mum and my brother and my mother-in-law went along also as well as our best friends who were sent virtual materials. In stage one we also had our adoption medicals so sometimes you will have to pay for these yourself, sometimes your agency or local authority will cover them for you. My husband and I individually booked a private adoption medical with our GP practice. We were both in there for about an hour, they have a standard form that your agency or local authority will give you and we took that with them and I was sat for probably a good hour an hour and a half maybe, with a doctor who took height, weight, BMI, she went through my medical history, she asked me some questions and then at the end of this there is a private section that they then fill out, send back to the agency themselves and your agency or local authority should have a private individual medical advisor who can assess your GP's report and provide feedback. During stage one we did have a midway review where we went into the agency, we sat down, we reviewed with our social worker and her manager, just if things were going to plan, we looked at the dates pretty much ticked everything off and just said yes we're on track yes we're on track to finish stage one let's put in our final stage one review and our stage two planning meeting stage two of the adoption process normally takes about four months and this is where the real assessment begins so stage two for us started with a stage two planning meeting again very similar to stage one we went into the agency with our social worker we had a big form that we filled in with all the dates of the key milestones that we needed to get through to get through stage two to panel um, and we basically put dates against them ready to tick off. We also booked our panel date here. We were given our panel date, I think three and a half months later, which was so exciting to know that all of the things in this big document were gonna get us there in a very short space of time. In stage two, we signed up to a lot of additional training modules. We had our preparation training in stage two, which is when we went to our agency, we went along with other prospective adopters. We were there three full days consecutively and we had some very intense training from the agency, different social workers. We got to meet um, experienced adoptive parents as well, which was absolutely fantastic. It was crazy and a lot of information to consume in a short space of time but every local authority and every voluntary agency offers preparation training and it is fantastic. In our stage two planning meeting we were also given expectations of homework. This was in our document each week when we had an assessment appointment we were given homework to prepare ahead of time for our social worker. Some of this revolved around post-adoption depression, it could have been about positive and negative identity, it could have been about promoting culture etc. Lots of different things that were set very specifically to our family. We were also given some expectations of learning, so we were told that we needed to submit a learning log along with our PAR and our supplementary materials to panel. And panel basically wanted to see what we'd researched, what we had learned, and so what we did was we would do lots of research and we'd keep it in a log with the author, the date, key findings, and we would submit that so panel could see what individual learning we had done in our own time and that was not compulsory. Things in stage two get very intense very, very quickly. This is where the real assessment begins. So your social worker should normally schedule a lot of appointments with you individually and if you're adopting as a couple for you both individually and jointly into your diary so that they can come. Normally ours was for a half day or a full day at times or sometimes just for a couple of hours but they were long appointments and we had about eight in total I think. I think we had four jointly and four individually. Again they range from full days to half days and each assessment um, appointment focused on a different topic. So for example, we covered topics such as childhood background, past relationships, support networks, finances, family, our motivations to adopt, 
um, our views on identity and education and our expectations for a future child, etc. Each appointment revolves around these different topics so that your social worker can have open discussions with you, can feed all of this information into some notes that they will then write into what they call a prospective adopter's report, or some of you might know it as the PAR. The Prospective Adopters Report is a huge report. I describe it as a thesis that your social worker writes specifically all about you, your life, all of the things you have discussed throughout your assessment appointments. It details all of the training that you've undertaken with the agency. It includes all of your DBS, local authority checks, your adoption medical, all of the work that you did in stage one. And it is presented to panel members so that when they present it to panel, they know who you are, they feel like they know you inside out and they feel confident enough to challenge you and ask you questions. The assessment appointments are very, very intense. You will have to discuss things that you probably won't be comfortable with. Social workers really want to see how you have grieved difficult parts of your life, how you've worked through challenges. So for example, if you have experienced a parental separation, you've lost somebody close to you, you've had significant marriage troubles in the past or mental health problems, none of these are weaknesses at all. In fact, they are very, very positive things for you as an adopter all your social worker will do is they will explore this in great detail because they need to understand how you work through that grief how you processed it what you learned from that how you've become a stronger person as a result of that and how that experience will help you become a very strong adoptive parent a lot of things that people think about adoption is that a lot of things eliminate you from being a good adopter that trauma and challenges in your life and mistakes that you've made will actually work against you in the adoption process and this could not be more true social workers agencies local authorities they want to see how challenging times in an adoptive parent's life will make them be able to relate to the child relate to the loss and the trauma that they've that they've experienced and how they will use this to ensure that they can empathise and be empathetic. And they are great, great qualities of an adoptive parent. In our last appointment for stage two, this mainly revolves around matching criteria. So we had a big discussion about what we envisioned our adoptive child to look like, what age range, what ethnicity, what additional needs we were and were not comfortable with. We were given a big list of additional needs that we literally circled yes or no to. And we had to discuss our answers with our social worker. Now, this should be completely non-judgmental. We did not feel judged one bit for saying no to specific additional needs. It is really important that you are so honest in this because you have to be able to handle things. The last thing that social workers and local authorities want is a potential placement breakdown if you have taken on more than you think you can emotionally and physically cater for so be honest it is so important that you are open with your social worker when discussing your matching criteria once we had this appointment we were then signed up to link maker and the family finding began now i'm going to do a different video on family finding because that was an absolute whirlwind in itself and there was so much to it but that in a nutshell was the assessment process i will just say that when we got our prospective adopters report before panel that was one of the best days just reading all of the work that we had done with our social worker in a report our social worker had done an amazing job we did get to read it through before she then submitted it to her manager for approval it was then submitted to panel a couple of weeks in advance so that panel members had a good amount of time to read it and get some questions together for myself and my husband. I hope that's been really, really helpful for some of you. If you do have any more questions, please feel free to drop me a comment or you can find me on email or over on Instagram. Please stay tuned for future videos and subscribe to my channel if you are in the UK adoption process or at all interested in adoption. I will certainly be doing more specifically on panel and family finding and our experience with both of these. Thank you for watching guys. Bye!